Hello, my name's Colin Yates and I'm going to run through a screen printing process that I use constantly in schools. Uh, fortunately young people really enjoy it, as do adults as well. It's a screen print monoprint technique. Um, as with all printmaking it takes a little bit of time to set up but once you have set everything up um, you can work very very quickly and produce good results. Uh, as with all printmaking you have to clear up but fortunately this process is quite quite neat and tidy. So I'm going to go through a sort of materials hit lists of essential materials that you'll need. So straight away you can see that I have a small screen. Uh, this enables us to print A4 size but I normally print about A5. Um, you can see that it's masked off with vinyl tape. Uh, one of my youngsters asked a good question, he got me stumped initially. Why do we use vinyl tape? Well, it stops the ink from going into the corners of the screen and, and forcing the mesh off. And it also gives us a nice shape, what we call a ground screen. So this can be rectangular, square, it could do a diamond, whatever, whatever you fancy. If I just flip this over, you can see that what I do is I put on some registration stops at the bottom there. Just two pieces of card. Um, well, they're not actually registration stops. They just give it a little bit of relief. So when that goes onto our printing stock, which is paper, there's what we call a bounce, a sort of snap off distance, which enables the paper to flip off. So just by putting masking tape on those two little corner pieces, gives us that distance there. So these screens are, are, are perfectly, perfectly good. You can see under there I've got a decent sheet of paper. I always go for decent quality paper. There's nothing worse than doing a beautiful print and, and finding you've printed on a scrappy old piece of newsprint. So this is about 150 grams, but you can get 180 or really go to town on 300. It just depends on your budget. The next thing that I'll show you on the materials chest checklist are squeegees. These are ones that actually come with the screen. Nice little um, portrait squeegee and a larger landscape squeegee. There. Now these can be expensive, so it's not essential. You can make your own squeegees. I just double up two pieces of card here and that's perfectly good. Um, the only problem is that the cleaning can be a, a little bit trickier than, than with, a, with a squeegee. One of my um, pupils from the last workshop I did, I asked him what his favourite thing was in the whole two days of working with me and he said scraping the squeegee clean of the ink. So a nice sort of tactile feel to it. Um, the next thing is a palette knife is always useful. This one's seen a bit of service. Uh, various sizes. They, again they can be expensive so we can improvise just a simple bit of card will do. That's fine. No, no problem there. The other thing that we'll need obviously I've already mentioned the vinyl tape for masking off the screen and uh, masking tape is useful. We'll need that for some sort of registration stops. Always useful to have masking tape in your kit. A couple of more, couple more items. This adhesive spray. This will become apparent when we, when I actually go through the printing process. But this is very, very useful just for sticking the paper down. We only use a tiny amount of that. Alternatively, we can use the classic uh, print stick, the, the glue stick, which which will be fine as well. The next thing that I'm going to show you is we need brushes, obviously for our work and I'm going to bring over the palette of the, the printing ink. Now the important thing with this is this is a crucial aspect that we must remember. System, we use System 3 paint. Now if we use System 3 paint just as it is on that screen it would block and we'd have a hell of a job trying to clean that screen afterwards. So what we have to do is we have to mix that with an acrylic printing medium, 
which is a clear base. 50-50. Uh, once we've done that mixture, that is perfect for printing and it cleans really nice and sweet, so there's no problem. So in sort of true Blue Peter fashion, what I've done here is I've mixed just a small selection of inks and that's 50-50. So a blob of System 3 and a blob of the printing base, which I'll show you, which is just a sort of transparent colour. It actually smells very pleasant. I find it smells nice anyway. It's like a coconutty smell. So a blob of, of System 3 paint and a blob of your extender base. Mix those up and you're good to go. You will see, I think, that a lot of a lot of teachers, uh, a lot of people who do workshops, I always put the ink or the paint out for pupils because otherwise they just put far too much out. And that's not just teenagers or young, uh, primary school, it's adults as well. You know, you, you think they're going to be painting the whole house. So just put tiny amounts of your ink out and, and with this, this arrangement, um, you, students can always share a palette as well. We're not going to use too much. The last couple of things, I always store my ink in little containers and I, uh, you can always just put a little bit of water on that and that will last for ages. And the other thing for clearing up, for clearing up, if you have a sink, brilliant, most art, art rooms have a sink. I have been into places, into faculties where we haven't got a sink so I use my faithful old bucket, great big car sponge or smaller sponges. So I think we can see that just a smaller kitchen sponge will do and we can get our screens nice and clean with, with these very very quickly. So I think apart from using, I always have a few little cups with me just for any excess uh, ink and wastage. I think that's about it. So that's your materials checklist.